Hi everybody, good morning, it's Pastor Joe. I'm just getting comfortable here in the sanctuary this morning and want to give you your devotion. You can turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 5 verse 18. But while you're turning there, I just want to make mention that today we're going to be talking a little bit about redemption. And I want to give you a definition of redemption and then go over a few scriptures. And uh, I'm hoping that today this will give you something to, to digest and be able to look into and, and uh, just let stir within your mind and within your heart as you meditate on what's being said today and the scriptures that are coming to you. Definition of redemption is the act of redeeming or the condition of having been redeemed. Second definition, there's a few different breakdowns. Second definition is recovery of something pawned or mortgaged. Something pawned or mortgaged, the, the recovery of it, okay? Number three, the payment of an obligation as a government's payment of the value of its bonds. Number four, deliverance upon payment of ransom, rescue. Number five, the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. Number six, the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or the clearing of a debt. A debt you owe and there was a debt that was paid. Now, why do we need redemption? I ask you to turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 18, and the Bible says, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one trespass act, or one righteous act, I should say, resulted in justification and life for all people. This scripture is directly connected to Adam, uh, the sin that Adam committed, and how one trespass resulted in condemnation for all. Sin entered the world, disobedience before God, and one righteous act, which we know to be Jesus Christ, justified and gave us life for all people. Now, it's important that we understand when we see Scripture and it says all people, that is, it's available for all people. Now, we can accept it or we can reject it. And we can, we can walk in it or we can, you know, kind of push it aside. We'll get into that in a couple of minutes. But <clears throat> redemption is very, very important to our lives as a Christian because it's something that was done for us. Jesus Christ paid the price for you and me. We were redeemed because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, is that automatic for everybody? Because Jesus died, that everybody receives that automatically? Scripture is scriptures going to explain today exactly how you and I receive this redemption, how our debt is paid in full. And it's, it's so important that we understand what the Bible says and not what, you know, people are telling us or we create our own, uh, you know, understanding of what we'd like it to be and things like that. This is God's plan. This is God's uh, uh, um plan for, for planet earth, for mankind, for living our life today and entering into eternity. So we don't want to get this wrong. And so let me read this to you. We, we all are recipients of redemption and for good reason. We are all sinners that require redemption from our sins. We are all sinners, every single one of us. Listen, I don't care if you've, if you've never even broke a glass before, if you're not even, if you never even thought a bad thought, Whatever it is, <clears throat> you and I, we were born into a sinful nature, okay? And we all fall short of the glory of God. We are all sinners and we need to be saved. We need to be covered in the blood of Christ to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's just the reality of the life we were born into, okay? The condition of the world itself. Second thing I want to say to you is redemption through Christ. God knew the one way for us to be redeemed was to pay a huge price. 
Instead of wiping us all off the face of the earth, he chose instead to sacrifice his son upon a cross. Jesus paid the ultimate price for our sins, and we are recipients of freedom through him. Through him. Not through you and me. Not through what we can do. Not through the good works. Listen, I do a lot of good works. I do a lot of things for a lot of people. I go above and beyond and I do all these things. But understand, what I do is the expression of the gratefulness of what he's done for me. I do because of what has happened on the inside of me. So there's an outward uh, exercise. There's an outward doing. There's an outward action that takes place through a Christian's life based on that love they receive, that forgiveness they receive, the redemption they received. And, you know, we can go on and on. The great things that God has done on the inside is manifested on the outside. And those are the things we find ourselves doing, good works. But the good works themselves doesn't get you to heaven. The good works themselves doesn't give us extra credit. The good works themselves doesn't uh, uh, say, you know, well, he was a really good person. The only thing that can get you and I redemption, cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ, is accepting the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. All right, so we're going to read some more scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. You know, the reality is, is that not only was I redeemed and God forgave me of all my sins, but I gave, I've been surrendering for many, many years now. I've been surrendering to God everything I don't want, everything I don't like, everything I need to let go of. I've been giving him everything I don't want, and he's been giving me everything that I need. He's been giving me uh, self-control. He's been giving me uh, uh, grace. He's been giving me mercy. He's, you know, giving me peace. He's giving me joy. He's blessing me with many, many beautiful things within my lives, within my life. And, you know, I say that to you because we need to understand that this grace belongs to God. And God gives it to us. He blesses us with it. It is a blessing upon your life and upon my life. It is not something that he owes us. It's not something that we've earned. It's not something we can ever earn. It is because of the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us, that our Heavenly Father releases grace and mercy upon our lives. This next scripture really stands out to me a lot because it's blessed me for so many years. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all, to be testified in due time. Now, listen to me carefully. I'm sure we all watch like police stories and, you know, different shows on TV and different things, but, you know, Whenever there's a hostage, we got to keep in mind when there's a hostage, there's got to be a ransom. There's got to be a bag of money. You know, somebody's asking for, you know, $20 million by noon today. And uh, I need an air, I need a truck and an airplane and, and cause they want to, they want to get away, you know, whatever it is. But there's a, there's a ransom because there's a hostage. You and I, here, biblically, spiritually, you and I were the hostage. You and I are the hostage. What sets us free from being that hostage is what this scripture is saying. Who gave himself for ransom for all to be testified in due time. You know, Jesus Christ gave his life, died on that cross. And when he shed his blood, and resurrected on the third day. That meant that you and I now have the opportunity to draw back into relationship with God. And that price can only have been paid by a perfect sacrifice. And that was him. 
Jesus Christ came with came to us to be able to die on that cross. So when even when we celebrate the birth of Christ, right? We celebrate the baby, we celebrate the manger, you know what I mean? The whole the whole scene. Think about it though. He knew from the very beginning that he came to die on the cross. That was his mission. His mission was to do one thing. His mission was to pay the price for you. Pay the price for me. To bring mankind back into relationship with God, to reconcile us back to our creator because of sin that entered the world. You know, that's pretty deep stuff right there when you think about it. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Everybody loves the blessing behind that. You know, it's see, Pastor Joe, it, it says there uh, uh, that he died for all, for everyone. Yeah, he did. But it says, for whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, what does that mean, believe in him? Does that mean, you know, we just know that he exists? or that we've accepted him into our lives and that we, we're beginning to turn those things over to him, that we're drawing back to our uh, rightful place in our relationship with God and the way that it was supposed to be. Which one is it? You see, we, we can't live on both sides of the fence and think that that's the, de that, that's the definition of believe. Believe doesn't mean that you're, you're one way one day and you're another way the other day. You know, most of us, when we get, when we collide with people out there in the world and we go through different changes and stuff, you know, for, for, in every area, we point our finger and we call people hypocrites. And so when we look at a scripture like this and we hear words like this and we take a good look at our own lives and say, where am I at with my relationship with God? Where am I at with my faith in God? Am I living on both sides of the fence? Where am I at concerning being redeemed? You know, I, I believe I'm redeemed, but the reality is, is if, if we're redeemed, if we've accepted Jesus Christ in our lives, then there's a lot of things that should get nailed to the cross that we don't do no more. How do we ask for redemption? The Bible says, Romans 10, verse 9 through 10, this is St. Paul. He says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Sounds like a pretty simple thing that we need to do, right? Confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. But now what does that mean to confess with our mouth and believe, and believe in our heart? The Bible says, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, meaning that we start living right. Christ becomes our righteousness. We start striving towards him and not the dark way. We start walking towards the light, not towards the darkness, not, not the wrong, but towards the right. And, and it's important that we, we, we comprehend what this is saying because we can't do both. And then it goes on to turn around and say, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, salvation is yours and mine. It's for the asking, the sincere and repented heart, the one that is sincere with God and really desires to be redeemed, washed in the blood, have your debt paid in full, is the person that will be saved. And that's just scripture. That's not me. That's not any denomination. That's scripture. And I don't know any other place but to run to besides the Bible itself to give me the blueprint for eternity. Think about that. The word eternity, that's truly forever. Not now, not in this life. Every one of us are gonna die one day and every one of us are gonna stand before the Lord. 
And the question is going to be, did you know him? See, Jesus is going to see, the, the, God is going to see the blood. And if the blood is not upon us, if the blood, blood has not covered us, we're not in a good standing a moment at that moment, <laughs> at that time. I've been in a lot of bad situations in my life. I've been caught in a lot of, uh, been in the wrong place at the wrong time, if you know what I'm saying. And I'm sure you have too. When it comes to my eternity, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time and in the wrong condition when it comes to my eternity. So when I think of redemption, I think of this. And when I think of this, it helps me get a better understanding. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, not more than one God. Man might have made men God. People might have created things that we worship and made them a God. But the Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, Jesus Christ who gave himself as a ransom for all of us, which are hostages, and to be testified in due time. You know what that means, in testified in due time? That one day we're all going to know that this was the truth. And so the life that we live now is the time we make our reservation. How do you make your reservation? Confess the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Let God do something deep within your life. Draw closer to him. I pray you wrote these scriptures down, and I pray that you go over this deeper in your own personal life. But when it comes to topics on eternity, which pretty much is everything in the Bible, but when you're talking about eternity, it's a serious matter, and you are responsible for that, no one else. So let's say a word of prayer, and uh, I pray that this word redemption, you got your definition, and you got some scripture in your spirit to chew on today and you get blessed. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you. I ask, Lord, that you bless my brothers and sisters. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you that we're no longer hostages, but that we are set free because of you. You paid the price and set free the hostages. I pray that anyone here listening, if they find themselves in a hostage situation, that they would understand that the price has already been paid. All they have to do is call him up. Jeremiah 33, 3, just call him up and accept him into their lives. And he will meet them right where they're at and set them free. And Lord, we thank you for all you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, everybody. Don't forget to register for Sunday service. God bless. Bye-bye.